Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Lamplight City. We are just about to go off and interview the nanny of the baby that was kidnapped from the Harris residence. So, I believe the house is just outside, so we'll go back to the map. Uh, here we go, Mrs. Davis's quarters. Uh, we can also go and speak to this person Come in. Uh, at the building site or whatever it is, but I want to get- Good day to you, ma'am. I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. I'm looking into the kidnapping of Charles Harris. Are you Mrs. Davis? I am. Oh, bless the spirits. They've sent someone to help at last. Uh, I guess I have. Um, yeah, I want to get all the information we can here so that we can go and speak to that. Is it Devins or Delvins? Something like that. I want to have all the information I can have possible before we go and speak to him because he could be involved in what's gone on here. So uh, let's have a look around. We'll look at this dresser. Another Harris hand-me-down, no doubt. You'd think they would have washed it first. Ah, oh, that's gross. Seems like that boiler's the only thing in here that's less than 10 years old. <laughs> My mother had a pewter teapot as well. Always made the tea taste funny. Yeah, I'd imagine it'd give it a bit of a metallic taste. I don't know if that's true. It's a spirit reaching out to a very frightened man. Possibly the fakest looking photo I've ever seen. Oh, really? That chest is full of undressed dolls? What the hell is wrong with this old bat? That's a bit weird. Undressed dolls? This looks like a mourning portrait of a young woman. Probably a relative of Mrs. Davis. Okay. Painting of a tower on a Scottish moor. I wish I'd been able to make it over there. Yeah, Scotland is really beautiful, especially the Highlands. Painting of a misty forest with a cemetery in the background. Cheery stuff. Yeah, there's not a lot of happy things going on in this house. Her Majesty Queen Jessica. This was clearly painted a long time ago. Pretty distinguished looking gentleman. Handsome. Good fashion sense. Wonder who he is. Good question. Maybe an ex husband or something? I don't know if she's like a, a nun. It looks like she might be wearing some sort of headdress. I don't know. Let's look at these books. Apparently, you've got to come all the way over to look these at are these. All books on spiritualism and the occult. Huh. Mrs. Davis doesn't seem to have many other hobbies. It's interesting. A boy taking a nap under a tree while his dog runs around in the distance. That brings back some good memories. The Harris family doesn't seem to hold the comfort of their servants in very high regard. I think a bed of nails would be an improvement. <laughs> yeah, probably true. Um, let's speak, I guess. I have some questions for you, Mrs. Davis. All right. Where do we start? I guess with the kidnapping. Tell me about the kidnapping of Charles Harris. Oh, dear. May the spirits forgive me. I feel so awful. Charlie was my responsibility, and I failed. Mrs. Davis, that is beside the point. What's important now is finding him and bringing him home. To do that, I need your full cooperation. Oh, you're right, Mr. Fordham. I'm sorry. I just need to collect my thoughts. Get the negative vibrations out of my mind. Now, what specifically would you like to know? Everything. Uh, let's ask about the time of the kidnapping. What time did the kidnapping occur? I'm, um... No, I'm not entirely sure. Why? I know I was in the nursery having a cup of tea about half past eight. I remember feeling very drowsy. I must have passed out then because ah. the next thing I, knew, I was being woken by Mrs. Harris. To think, whoever took Charlie did it while I was in the room. Oh, may the spirits grant me peace. Do you happen to take any sort of sleep medications or soporifics? Oh, dear me, no. Those types of drugs cloud the mind and make it impossible to tune into the ether. Sure, sure. You say that as though it were a bad thing. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, apologies, I, I spoke out of turn. So somebody drugged the tea then, I'm guessing. Suspects. Can you think of anyone who would have wanted to take the child? Well, I'm not one to gossip, but... I am quite sensitive to the energy and vibrations that people give off. I get the impression that Mr. and Mrs. Harris aren't very happy in their marriage. Yes, yeah, true. Ah, come on, anyone could have picked up on that. Yeah. Anyone except you, that is. <laughs> Mr. Harris likes to stay out late and not take his wife with him. I can't remember the last time they went out. Really? I don't know what he gets up to, but it's possible he may have made some enemies. Hmm, okay, motive. Can you think of any reason why someone would want to kidnap Charles? 
It might have been for money, but last I heard, there was no demand for a ransom. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know why this happened, Mr. Fordo. I just hope you find the poor child. He must be scared to death. Yeah, I guess by now, if it was a ransom thing, they would have called up demanding payment. I found this piece of torn fabric in the nursery. Does it look familiar to you? No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. So I guess the other question is, who made the tea? If she didn't make it herself, perhaps the person who did make the tea could be our suspect. I found this button in the baby's crib. Do you recognize it? Why, yes. That's one of Barney's eyes. Oh. Barney. Charlie's stuffed bear. It's his favorite toy, a gift from my friend Linda. I didn't find a stuffed bear in the nursery. Then whoever took the baby must have taken Barney as well. Oh, at least the poor thing has something to comfort him. Bless the spirits. Why did the parents not notice the, the button from the child's favorite toy? I mean, I guess it's possible they, they just leave all the care of the baby to to Mrs. Davis, but that's that's weird. Who is Linda? Mrs. Linda Walker. She's a good friend of mine. As I said, she gave me Barney as a gift for Charlie. Can you tell me anything else about her? Oh, she's a lovely girl, very much in tune with her spiritual nature. I greatly enjoy my conversations with her. When was the last time you saw her? Oh, hmm. I don't remember. No, 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 wait. It was at the last Spectre Society meeting on the 19th. That's right. The Spectre Society? What is the Spectre Society? I mean, it sounds... It's a club for spiritualists and yeah. amateur investigators of the Pretty self-explanatory name We meet there. twice a month to socialize and discuss our findings. I see. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> Though I don't expect you to share my beliefs, Mr. Fordham. Oh, I have a bit more experience than you'd think with regards to the spirit world. Voices in our head. You can say that again. Yeah, that sort Where of thing. Where exactly do these meetings take place? At a private residence in Gascon. May I have the address? Why, yes. It's 325 Rue Jumeau. Are you going to seek spiritual guidance to find Charlie? Yeah. Perhaps. You never know what might be worth looking that's, into. That's what we're going to do. We're definitely going to do that. Um, right, let's ask about the portrait. That's a lovely portrait. Who is it of? That is my late husband, There we go. Jonathan. Thought so. He used to attend meetings of the Spectre Society with me, bless him. I tried to get him to be more in tune with the other side, but I think he was just humoring me. Ah, oh, he was a good man. Everyone at the Society cared for him very much. I wonder what happened to him. Uh, Linda's address. Do you have Linda Walker's address? No, I don't. I never visited her home. I get the feeling mm. she doesn't like having visitors or being home very much. She prefers to meet people elsewhere. I was the same way after my husband died. It was embarrassing for my friends to see me living so differently. But I feel it's not just a matter of pride for dear Linda. Really? I think there are lots of bad memories associated with where she lives. I try to stay away from places like that. They leave a mark on the soul, you know. Right, so Linda's a little bit suspicious then. She's definitely a person of interest. I couldn't help but notice that chest full of dolls in the corner. Oh, that. Oh, I know it must look a bit strange, but uh, I pick up old and broken dolls so they can be repaired and donated to orphanages. It's my way of giving back to the community and helping poor children who have nothing to play with. Well, what a kind soul. I wish you would find less creepy ways to express your <laughs> True, it's a bit, bit weird. Okay, uh, achievement unlocked. Not what it looks like. Let's ask about herself then. How long have you worked as a nanny? Only a few years. I never had to work when I was married. My husband had a lot of money. Unfortunately, he was in great debt. And after the spirits took him back to the ether, I wasn't left with much. So I began working as a nanny to make ends meet. Makes sense. But I consider taking care of children a reward in its own right. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Davis. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, that was quite insightful, actually, because we figured out that Charles had a favorite toy that the parents didn't notice that recognize the button from, which is odd. 
something to think about for sure. Uh, we also found out about Linda Walker, so we're going to have to to go and see her at the Spectre Society. So that's something else we can do. Don't have any suspects yet. So do we go to Linda or do we go to Devins? That's the question. I'm thinking. I'll be going now, Mrs. Davis. May the spirits guide your path. I'm thinking we go with my original plan of trying to put together clues before we go to Devon's. So let's go to the Spectre Society. See how creepy this place is. Uh, is, this, is this all like boarded up? Mm, too dark to tell what's no. inside. They must enjoy the somber atmosphere. I like the design of this street. I wonder if Philip's steam-powered carriages will ever make those things go out of fashion. <laughs> I wonder if Philip. Okay, no, she's gonna say the same thing again. Uh, street lamp. I wouldn't like to have a street lamp right outside my window. Not without a good set of thick curtains, anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm, too dark to tell what's inside. They must enjoy the somber atmosphere. Anything up here? No. I like the sound of the horses and things. Oh, manure! Look. Nothing like the smell of horse manure in the baking sun, eh, Miles? Still, it's not as bad as the chum. <laughs> right, in we go. Are we? Are we just walking in or knocking? Knocking first polite yes may i help you uh maybe i'm miles fordham i wanted to ask you a few questions i'm interested in joining the spectre society this is the spectre society right i'm interested in joining we'll go undercover uh, yes it is welcome darling our membership process is a bit different to most social clubs we require a sponsor hi sounds simple enough well, you see, we ask that sponsors be people who have passed on into the spirit world. Aye. Once you name your sponsor, I will attempt communication beyond the ether. When they Ooh. answer, you will be judged and considered for membership. Uh, well, maybe we could use Bill. What are you looking for in a sponsor? A willingness to communicate from beyond the ether. Open-mindedness, a desire for truth. In other words, all the qualities of a member of the Spectre Society. Actually, we've had former members who have passed on act as sponsors before. Interesting. Uh, I've got a sponsor. I've got a sponsor. Excellent. What is the name of your sponsor, darling? Uh, Bill. Bill Legere. Is if not, sponsor. we'll go for the husband. Seriously, Fordham. I thought you knew better than that. Bill Legere. Very well. I will attempt to communicate with him. Hopefully, this isn't one of those. She if can you do this all day, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble communicating. Perhaps you can come back and try again later? Yeah, I'm going to try again now, actually. See? Told you. All right, Bill. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for being really helpful. We're back. We've got a new sponsor. <laughs> oh, hello again. How may I help you? Uh, I'd like to name a new sponsor. I'd like to name a new sponsor. Yes, of course. Who is your new sponsor? The husband. Uh, Jonathan Davis. Make up a name. Jonathan Davis is my sponsor. You knew Jonathan? Yeah, we did. He was such a kind man. We were best friends. Yes, I can feel his presence, and it speaks positively of It would do, it would Please do. Please, come in, mister. Um, I didn't catch your name. It's Miles Fordham. And I am Angela Maxwell, the founder of the Spectre Society. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. Oh, it's May literally... I offer you some refreshments? Some water or tea, perhaps? As long as it's You're not... You're very kind, but I'm afraid I must decline right now. Well, please let me know if you change your mind. We, we will. We... Would you look at this place? It's like a candy store for psychics. It is, actually. Um, let's have a look around. There's quite a few members in this group. Let's see if we recognize anybody. September 19th, meeting number two, signatures. Angela Maxwell, that's that lady there. Monica Brown, Sophia Shaw, Thomas Gilbert, Linda Walker, that's the one we know. Uh, literally can't read that. Something, I don't know. Randall Faulkner, Henrietta Davis. That's Mrs. Davis, right? Uh, Edward Lagrange, Cynthia Wilkins. Comments. Angela, the meeting was wonderful, Cynthia. Anyone interested in a used spirit board, please let Thomas know. Thank you. Linda, looking forward to hearing you over at the manor next week. Come around 8pm and you can meet Charlie. Henrietta. That's about the time the disappearance happened. So did Angela turn up with the tea and put some sort of drugs in it? Okay, that is suspicious. Those are some creepy twin girls. I can see a passing resemblance to Miss Maxwell, actually. <laughs> that is very suspicious, right? Ooh, spooky. That ghost between the two people almost manages to look convincing. 
That's probably the storage case for the spirit board. Oh yeah, they got a spirit board. I think I've seen one of these before. What does it do? It's a spirit board. We use it to contact spirits, and they in turn spell out a message with the letters on the board. Well, I've got a message from Miss Maxwell if she ever tries to use a spirit board around <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm sure you have. What's this? What a fascinating device. Exactly what does it do? That is an etherometer. It's designed to pick up vibrations from the ether and translate messages from the spirits. Okay, interesting. A great man once said to me, Bill, you aren't going to get very far in life just staring at balls. <laughs> He's dead now. But then again, so am I. True. Must be for the more traditionalist members. Yeah, could be. Could well be. Uh, there's some tarot cards here. Bookcase. Anything good on the bookcase? Ooh. Members are free to borrow books as long as you check with me first, it's Angela. Nice Miss Maxwell to let people borrow her books. Even if they are all just a bunch of nonsense. And coming from me, that's really saying something. Mm, okay. Well, books were quite important in the last one. Uh, Secrets of Astral Projection. Metam metempsychosis, the art of the seance, terrors of the deep, the giant squid, that seems a bit out of place. Uh, voodoo, medium's gateway to spirit realm, what lies beyond the veil, the mysteries of spontaneous combustion, secrets of the tarot, spirits and the ether. Hmm. Well, I don't know if we know that we necessarily need a book just yet, um, but there is a painting Black here. Black says Leonora Pattinson, seer. She looks like someone I would not want to fool around with. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, then, guys, well, we're out of time, so we'll speak to Angela Maxwell and try and figure out if there's any books we need in the next episode. We'll also see about these tarot cards, but um, this is taking a rather spiritual turn, which is unexpected. Um, I'm enjoying the variety in the cases in this game. I've got to say, it's very, very well put together, and I'm looking forward to playing more. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, and Barry Aldridge for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new and I'll see you all next time.